then as his theology de developed, he's also um, writing and working at the same time as um, Karl Barth, who you mentioned before. Um, so they have a particular encounter at a conference. And so it became very clear how they stood in tension with each other. So that, I found that very fascinating, that description in the book. Could you share a little of that with us? Yes. Yeah, so um, Karl Barth rose to fame in the wake of World War I when he wrote a book called The Epistle to the Romans. And basically, The Epistle to the Romans was his just absolute rebuke of the liberal German theology he grew up with, right? Where he basically was saying, this theology places way too much confidence in human beings, right? You're, you don't, um, you're not going to get to God by saying man in a loud voice is a Karl Barth quote. Right. And so he really, you know, he's referred to as neo-Orthodox because he is echoing Calvin and basically really centering the sovereignty of God. God and talking about the word as God's self communication. Um, mm -hmm. And um, basically saying, we're not building the kingdom of God here, right? The best we can hope to do is to bear witness to what God has already done in Jesus, right? And by the 1920s, uh, Niebuhr was already starting to write letters disagreeing pretty sharply with Bart. And one of his cutting observations about Bart is, listen, he, you know, paints this really vivid picture of, of God, but he loses any human element in that picture, right? What grounds does Bart give us for continuing to strive to build a better world? And the way that he put it is Bartianism creates and then devours ethical passion, right? Hmm. The a resting portrait of God builds this passion in you. And then since there's no room for human action in the system, um, then the passion just withers away and you're left stuck with nothing. And, you know, whether that's fair or not, that's a whole other question. So I don't want to present this as the, the final word on Bart by any means, but it was Niebuhr's critique. So fast forward now to 1948. Uh, this is the meeting of the World Council of Churches. Um, again, in context here, um, the world's still in shambles and churches realized, okay, we are basically the only form of viable international infrastructure left in the world right now, right? You have all these blocks that went to war, their infrastructure shattered, their channels of diplomacy are shattered. Um, but these churches have get, kept, tr you know, track and kept in touch with churches in other countries all over the world. And so there's an, an actual infrastructure there that can, you know, potentially help um, bring stability and, 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 and help anchor this, this period in world history. So at that conference, uh, Bart kicks off the conference with a talk called No Christian Marshall Plan. And in the course of that talk, he says, you know, and, and, and keeping again with his, his theological sensibilities and his system is the first thing we need to do in this conference is to give up any sense that the care of our world is our care, right? And to let go of the dreadful, godly, ridiculous opinion that we are the mythical figure Atlas destined to carry the dome of heaven on our shoulders, Right. That's not our work. That is God's work. And we bear witness to what God does. Uh, Niebuhr did not take very kindly to that. So they ended up going, it ended up being this published repartee uh, where Niebuhr responded to No Christian Marshall Plan by basically saying, um, listen, Bart gives us a wonderful theology of the catacombs, right? It's a great theology for a church that's under siege, but once the siege is lifted, right, and people who are mm. identify as Christian are able to move around in the world, what does he give you, right? The other way he puts it is, you know, Bart gives you great resources for confronting the devil when the devil appears with two horns and both cloven feet, right? right? But he doesn't give you any resources when you're just seeing like half a cloven foot and one horn, 
right? In other words, when, when we're working in situations where there's something a little bit wrong, not completely wrong, and we need to make these fine grained judgments between two broken political options, let's say, um, what resources does Bart Stock gives us for navigating, you know, what's really kind of like more ordinary Christian life, right? As opposed to this moment of, of cataclysm. And the other image he uses here is, is the ark, basically saying, you know, it's a great theology to get you through the storm. Once the ark lands, Right? You're going to need something more than just saying God is great. You're going to need something that helps you get into the nitty gritty of, of these, these very ambiguous decisions that all human beings have to make over the ordinary course of life. So that ended up being the debate. It's, it's a really interesting debate. And I think um, what I'd say about their relationship, Niebuhr really respected Bart a lot and just found him very frustrating. Right. You know, he, he was at a conference with Bart once and, and, you know, wrote a letter to his wife where he said, you know, Bart is a genius. He's a poet and a prophet. And I do not understand how somebody who's that much of a genius has such a hard time relating to other human beings. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think that expresses, you know, the, the, the tension between, you know, admiration, but frustration. And I, you know, I think they both kind of caricatured one another. But I think there's a lot of truth in the caricature, right? You know, right. was Niebuhr right about everything, you know, about Bart at the end of the day? Not really. A lot of it was caricature. But there is something essential that he's getting right that I think um, Bart understood there was something there. And I think Bartians today need to pay attention to. Um, and somebody like Karawas, um, you know, when he uses Bartian critiques of Niebuhr, um, again, I think it's the same sort of thing where it's a bit of a caricature of Niebuhr. But there's a lot of truth in the caricature and people who are drawn to Niebuhr's thought do well to pay attention to what somebody like Stanley has to say about Niebuhr. Please check out more videos from The Charge. Don't forget to click on like and hit the subscribe button.